You know, by nature, I'm not a competitive person. Um, so doing triathlon was never about being outwardly competitive. It was just about trying to trying to learn more about myself and understand, okay, what happens when this gets hard? Like at the 20 mile mark in the marathon, it's going to be hard. What do you do? Where does your mind go? Hey everybody, Dr. Axe here. So excited to have as a guest on the show today, Brendan Brazier. He, I've actually been following him for a really long time. He uh, was a professional triathlete. He was the co-founder of Vega, a really incredible nutritional company. And today he started several new companies. But I can tell you this about Brandon. He loves this principle that we talk a lot about on the show, and that is food is medicine. And he believes strongly in plant-based nutrition and using different types of superfoods to help us get an edge, whether it's in business or our physical life, or like physical training, such as, uh, you know, being an athlete or really just anything in life, you know, nutrition helps. And so, hey, Brennan, so excited to have you on the show today. Hey, thank you, Dr. Axe. Well, hey, you know, again, I've been following you for so long and been so impressed with what you've done. In fact, I've used a lot of your products. I used to use one of your uh, uh, energy drinks that you created. I used to do those dark chocolate bars with the maca, yeah. you know, that you created. And so, you know, I know you're a great formulator as well. And uh, I've loved using a few of your products over the years. They're fantastic. But one of the things I want to talk a lot about today is this sort of plant-based nutrition, plant-based medicine, talk about adaptogens, all those things. And also talk about one of your new companies. And it is a, uh, a company that's producing probably the healthiest alcoholic beverages in the world um, from apples. So we're going to get into that too, but I'd love to start hearing about your story. Like what got you into this natural health industry? Yeah, you know, I, I, I did triathlon right out of high school. I started um, early 90s, just swimming, biking, running, and tried to make a career out of that and, and did, it, um, did it full time for seven years. And you know, that uh, it, during that time, you, you learn a lot about yourself, you know, mentally, um, one, but also nutritionally, you, you know, you, you become, as you know, as an athlete, you know, you get very sensitive and in tune to your body, how it responds to different training, but also nutrition. So that's what got me into it was really trying to speed recovery. You know, I was just trying to um, get my muscles to regenerate and renew themselves as quickly as possible so I could squeeze more training into the day which would then mean I, I assumed I would become a better athlete in less time. And, um, you know, the, the key is recovery. So that's what got me into nutrition in the first place. Wow, it's amazing. You know, this, this was years ago. I used to do a lot of triathlons as well. It was a similar passion of mine. And you, you were much better than I was. But uh, again, I just, you know, like you, I know I love all things fitness, everything from doing CrossFit to just, you know, hit training to, to triathlons. But again, I've always admired your ability to just excel in so many ways. And I think that's one of the things that makes you such a good um, formulator is like you're, you're, you pursue not just doing well, but being the best, you know, how can you get that slight edge in nutrition? And I absolutely love that. So let's dive in. I want to talk about adaptogens for a minute because this is something that you've used in the products you've created in the past. You're even putting them in these new beverages that you're creating now. Talk to me about what are, what are adaptogens and what are some of your favorite both in the herb category and also in the mushroom category? Yeah, you know, well, it's interesting. So back in 2003, the first, that's when I first, I still remember the first time I ever learned about adaptogens. I was actually, I was um, at home and, you know, I was training full time back then. And, um, you know, I heard this guy on the radio, he was talking about maca and I'd never heard of that, you know, 2003. And he had just started a company in Canada where I grew up in Vancouver, um, importing maca from Peru. And he was describing it. He was talking about how it's a root vegetable and it can help um, reduce cortisol levels, which is a stress hormone that, you know, when you're stressed, whether it's physical from training or mental, emotional, whatever, can help just regulate that, bring it down so then you can sleep more deeply, you wake up, you're fresh, you're rested, don't crave caffeine, don't crave sugar, and you've treated the cause of fatigue because now you're better rested as opposed to having to treat the symptom of fatigue through stimulants and so on. So I became very curious. I, I bought some of this maca that he was talking about, and it you know, it really worked. I, I found I had better sleep quality and I woke up, I was fresh, I was rested and it, it really seemed to be more of a holistic approach. It wasn't sudden, you know, it took me probably six weeks to really notice a difference, but I actually reached out to this guy because um, I was so impressed, the guy on the radio and, 
um, his name's Charles Chang, and you know the, we we became friends, and then uh, we started Vega together. So um, we started putting his maca in the blender drink that I've been making for myself, and then when we combined the two, um, found it worked really well. So that was my introduction to maca. Was really my introduction to um, to getting into the whole world of nutrition. Wow, I mean that's amazing. You know, maca is obviously an amazing uh, one of those ma- amazing adaptogens. So let's let's talk about this new project you're working on. It's called Pop Culture, right? And you have another one called 101 Cider House. I'd love to hear about both of this this cider you guys are doing. This these fermented apples, along with the uh, uh, you know the the other one I mentioned here. Yeah, it's actually pulp culture, like as in pulp, like the. Oh, um, like, like, like pulp from after you juice, you have the leftover. Yeah, right. Gotta, so, okay. But that's good. Yeah. Like pot, like obviously sort of a, a play on pop culture, but um, yeah. So, you know, it's interesting, like, um, you know, Vegas and you're 16 now and I'm still very involved with that. And um, you know, it's, but it's sort of, it's, I'm, I'm less involved because it was all team now to, to do that. So I, I can go off and do all these other things that I think are interesting and fun and learning and, you know, I, I hadn't drank an alcoholic drink for, it was 14 years. Um, no real reason. I just, you know, I was never a big drinker and I, I don't know, it just didn't, it never felt good after and it just, I just stopped doing it. Yeah. Um, but then one day I was in Whole Foods in Venice just a couple of years ago and I saw a product on the shelf called One on One Cider and I was actually looking at labels because a lot of craft beer and cider and stuff, their labels are pretty cool. And I was working on this other, this other project where I wanted to get some label inspiration. So I picked it up and it had one ingredient. It was just apples. Like, and I thought, how can there be one? There's not even water added to this thing. Like, this is amazing. And it has probiotics. It has zero sugar and it has 6.9% alcohol. How is this possible with just apples? So I emailed info at 101 Cider. This guy responds right away, guy, Mark McTavish. Um, and he, uh, he, he's also from Canada, but had moved to LA about 10 years ago, about the same amount of time as me. And he, he was familiar with Vega, and he was in the fitness industry in Canada as well. So we knew a lot of the same people. And um, so we, we became friends. And, uh, and then I became a partner in 101 Cider because I was just so impressed. He explained everything to me, how... You know, you just let apples sit and they ferment. And of course, there's sugar in it and fermentation eats all the sugar. The byproduct fermentation, of course, it's alcohol, but it's also organic acids, it's B vitamins, it's probiotics, all these other great things that you can get just fermenting. And I thought, wow, if it's just apples in here, I mean, how, how can this be bad for you? So, you know, I tried some, I thought this is amazing. You know, I felt, I felt good. It really worked well with my digestive system. And I, I became a big fan and, like I say, a partner. And then we uh, collaborated and uh, started Pulp Culture together. Wow. Absolutely amazing. Share with us, what are, what are some of the other herbs that you're putting in there? So you have apples. Any other unique ingredients that have health benefits? Yeah. So 101 Cider, we're keeping very simple in the way that we have apple as the base. And then another one, another um, blend of 101 we have called Sunlit which is apples, hops, and grapefruit peel. Just three ingredients. So basic, tastes amazing. There's one called cactus rosé. There's another one called gunpowder guava. But then we did this whole separate line, but we used the base this, as the same as apples. And that's, as he talked about, Paul Culture. The difference with that is we blend in um, fermented superfoods as well. So like um, uh, goji berries, for example. Um, ferment those and blend those in and we use dandelion and um, matcha green tea or matcha and um, and then we start you know some mushrooms as well blending those in like reishi and lion's mane and so each has a function there are four different functions in Paul Palter we have one called think that has the matcha that's really good for focus and we have another one called um, hustle that's sort of a more ginger turmeric uh, dominant flavor and then we have one called Restore that has a dandelion in it, um, helps, you know, liver cleansing and so on. Then we have one called Relax. It's lavender base, has lavender in it and reishi. So, you know, just chill out, relax after. So they have functional purposes as well as just, you know, tasting great and being healthy. Wow. So, okay. So tell me the difference between two. We got pulp culture, which is, which is what you just sort of described. You've got, and by the way, I'm online right now looking at these. They look incredible. You've got hustle and this is, 
Uh, you got ginger, turmeric, lion's mane in there, along with ginger and strawberry. You got Restore It's Grapefruit, Goji, Dandelion, Milk Thistle, Rishi. You got Relax, it's Blueberry, Lemon, Lavender, Valerian, and Rishi. I mean, these look amazing. And then the Sour Cider, that's more of the cider you were talking about, and that's Cider 101? That's right. Yeah, exactly. So we make it in the same facility in downtown Los Angeles in uh, Mission Junction. So... Um, the, like I say, the base is the same. So we have the big fermentation tanks there and can make everything there. And then um, just, yeah, keep it really basic with the sour cider, you know, so zero sugar. Everything we make is zero sugar. Wow. Which um, really intrigued me because I'm a big proponent of that. Um, as, as more people um, are becoming aware of, you know, trying to cut back on sugar, obviously. So, you know, it was just interesting because we figure – why is it that people are so meticulous about label reading when it comes to food? You know, folks like I assume you, me, you know, the folks we know, the folks we hang out with, people who want to perform well in sport or, or just life in general, we read labels and we yeah. hold the food to a very high standard. So why do we relax that when it comes to drinking alcoholic beverages and just like, oh, don't care, <laughs> don't even know what's in that. And of course, you know, people are more conscious now because they're drinking things like white claw and you know these hard seltzers that have zero sugar they just don't have as you know the, some of the bad stuff has been taken out but there's nothing good put in right so yep. we're like why should it not only just not be as bad for you why not make it actually really good for you so that's that's what our aim is i love it and i love too people are getting all of these benefits with the probiotics with the organic acids with the you know the mushrooms like reishi with all of the herbs and spices and so i love the again i'm just looking at these online these are amazing and the great thing too you guys have set it up where you can ship it uh right to somebody's front front door across the united states because it's it's like one it's fermented apples is what you're doing here and um man that's just fantastic let's talk about athletic performance for a minute because obviously this is something that you know you're one of the world's best in knowing how to use nutrition to improve performance what are some of the things, like, like what would you recommend? By the way, I'd love to hear, what, what do you do for your morning smoothie recipe? What do you do for your recovery meals? What, is, you know, what, what, what do you recommend? Yeah, no, great question for sure. And I think it's, it's also about timing. Like timing is so important. You know, you wouldn't have um, the same thing right after a hard workout that you would have right before going to bed. You know, they serve different purposes. So yeah, no, the smoothie um, I make normally, it's just, you know, I just blend in Vega One with um, sometimes just just homemade almond milk or hemp milk um, or even just water. Or I'll mix in other greens. Like, I, I really like arugula a lot. I'm a big fan of arugula. I actually grow a bunch just out front here in Venice and um, just blend all that up and just lots of greens, alkaline forming, and keep it simple. Then sometimes I'll, I'll blend in, like obviously if I'm trying to get more calories in, I'll blend in some raw nuts and seeds, if you know, big training days or um, fruit as well. I add some extra fruit in there, even avocado sometimes um, if I really want to pack things in. But, you know, recovery after a hard workout, um, you, you know, you want roughly a four to one carb to protein ratio. As, as I'm sure you're aware, so letting uh, all your, your listeners know, but um, I find that works really well. So, you know, it can even be at that time, some sugar, like naturally occurring sugar from fruit is not a bad thing. You know, you don't, like you say, want that throughout the day and later in the day before bed or anything, but right after hard workout, your body needs fuel um, in the form of carbs and you can get that in there. You get a bit of protein. So that helps with the, um, the protein synthesis as well, and just get your body starting to repair. I love that. Awesome. You know, one of the things we're living in a, you know, just a, a different time today where people I think are trying to be more conscious of their immune systems. What advice do you specifically have for all the listeners here on, because I know I'm doing lots of things. I know other people are recommending things, but what are some things you're doing? Are there any other foods that you're eating more consistently or supplements you're taking or just things you're more conscious of now or recommending? to help support people's immune systems? Yeah, it's a good question. You know, I, I mean, I find if I get a little thing in my throat or anything, oil of oregano works yeah. pretty well. I mean, that just seems to usually get rid of it right away. You know, really, I think sleep. Sleep is such a big thing for, for immune function. And I find if I'm feeling a little run down, 
just trying to get more sleep is a big thing. And sometimes eating a little less, you know, I think just in, in general, like I just sort of feel like, you know, digestion's a, a big part of energy requirement of your body and just eating a little less sometimes, just letting it, letting it rest a little more. Um, but then, you know, there are the other basic things too. You know, ginger is a great one and turmeric and um, just good um, basic you know, immune boosting things that, that a lot of people are aware of, I think, just eating healthy in general, you know, big salads, lots of greens, um, you know, staying away from lots of kind of, you know, refined processed foods, which is just kind of good advice in general, I think. But um, yeah, and then, of course, you know, sometimes not straining your body quite as much through exercise. So sometimes just kind of taking the edge off your harder workouts, because you know, no exercise is bad for your immune system, but a lot of exercise is also bad for your immune system. There's kind of that sweet spot of health uh, when your immune system is as strong as it can be. And yeah, if you're training a lot, you know, you can really take a, take a beating on your immune system. And, you know, I used to think back before I, I knew this years ago that I thought, man, I'm just so unlucky. Like I get super fit. I've been training so hard. And I get super fit. And then I always get sick right after. It's just so unlucky not realizing that obviously there's a correlation, you know, you, you put in the amount of training you need to, to get to that level of fitness and uh, your immune system is, is shot, you know, and if you're around any kind of viral or bacterial infection around other people or anything, you know, it's very likely that you'll pick that up. Yeah, I'm with you. I mean, there's absolutely a balance there. I, cause, and I get this question a lot, like, Hey, if I'm sick, should I work out? And my answer always is lightly. You know, it's like you should go, you know, go for a 20 minute bike ride, do a yoga class, stretch out, do some things to move, go for a long walk in nature, but don't, you know, don't overexert yourself. But I agree with you. There's that. And, and, and we're not saying, I know you and I aren't saying don't work out hard, especially if you're not sick, but also, you know, three plus hours a day plus the emotional stress of life that that can add up on people. And I love your point with sleep. I mean, sleep, of course, is so, I mean, a lot, you know, people sort of forget and kind of like, oh yeah, of course, like we, we hear uh, reduce, you know, sl or uh, get more sleep and reduce stress. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get to that. But where's the pill, <laughs> you know, or where's the, the magic supplement? But I know, I mean, I'm with you. Those things are, those are a big deal. I've actually been, have you seen me? This is a whoop. Have you seen? Them? Oh yeah. I, I, I don't have one, but I've seen them. Yeah. I got it recently. Actually, it's, it's pretty cool. You know, it tells you your recovery, um, level based on heart rate and, and sleep and your workouts and all those things. And it kind of comes up with this, I guess it's an algorithm that determines how hard um, you can work out that day based on how well you recover. So it's, it's kind of interesting and it, it details your sleep pretty well too, with, you know, um, deep sleep and, and REM cycle sleep and stuff. So it's kind of interesting. Wow. I love that. You know, one of the other things I know too, that you've, uh, you know, you've talked about over the years is how important getting more plants in your diet is. And so I'd love to hear from you a little bit too about one of the things I've read, in fact, even uh, recently uh, reading up on your website, reading through your passion for alkaline foods. Talk to me about this sort of choosing alkaline forming foods. And I know you as an athlete as well, you want to keep your pH balanced, but talk to me about why alkaline forming foods and also what are some of your you know, favorites that you might have for you know, lunch or dinner? Yeah, no, great question. Yeah, you know, as an athlete, I find, because um, you basically spend all day building up inflammation, you're breaking down muscle tissue, that's all training is. And of course, the body overcompensates, becomes stronger. And that's why training works, you get stronger. But I found that when I, I got away from some of the, the more processed carbs and refined foods, when I was first starting out and started swapping out really alkaline forming foods, so greens, like lots of greens, um, you know, lots of, lots of vegetables in general. And I just found that, you know, my range of motion went up a lot. So my flexibility was better. My efficiency was better. Risk of injury went down because my range of motion was better. So really uh, made a big difference for me. And I think a lot of people have inflammation and don't really realize it because you wouldn't know unless you know what it feels like to not have it. Like you can't even make a, a tight fist, you know, when people are really inflamed and it goes away and then they can feel and it feels different. But yeah, I think just... Uh, Getting, getting lots of uh, greens, you know, eat a big salad every day, um, blend greens into your smoothie. Uh, and, and again, away from those refined carbs. So um, like starchy white bread, for example, I like sprouted bread a lot. 
Um, but I find that that works really well for me, higher in protein as well. And again, you know, sprouting, of course, is um, an alkaline forming thing. So sprouted grains too, like pseudo grains, amaranth, quinoa, buckwheat, wild rice, those are all technically seeds, right? So they're not even really grains, pseudo grains. So you can sprout those and those will start to grow and those become very alkaline forming. And, um, and again, you know, really, really healthy and really good and really cheap too. You know, you can get them in the bulk section of most supermarkets and, you know, for like $2 worth of lentils, you can sprout them and they, you know, they're huge and they'll fill you up. So, um, you know, eating healthy too, doesn't have to be expensive. It's great. So I, uh, you know, looking at you and your career, so you've started, you know, a supplement company, you've started a beverage company now, and also you're a professional triathlete, like you've been successful in so many things you've done. So moving off nutrition a little bit for a second, but I think this also applies, you know, I think that one of the things I've noticed, you know, when I used to uh, operate my clinic many years ago, and I would see patients, sometimes I could tell right away how they were going to do, you know, like, based on their attitude, their mindset, the questions they asked. And sometimes if they were successful in many areas of life, they ended up being really successful in their diet and vice versa. I want to talk about success for a minute. So for you, what do you think some of the most important habits that you have that have allowed you to be successful in so many areas as an athlete, as a business person, and you having joy in your life? Like, What are some of those habits that other people can model you in in creating, you know, a life of, uh, of having success. Oh, well, thanks. Nice, nice of you to say. I mean, it's, I really think it's, um, it's enjoyment. You got to enjoy it, but, uh, curiosity, you know, just by nature, I'm a very curious person. I ask why a lot just to myself. And, you know, that's, when I think about it, thinking back to Vega, you know, it was just this curiosity in this, you know, hearing this person on the radio talking about this, this root vegetable that could help you know, lower cortisol so that you could exercise more before your stress threshold flows over and you have all these, these issues. So, you know, I just became curious. Um, and then again, you know, with the apples, like seeing a drink on the shelf that had one ingredient, and I didn't understand how that, that worked. I didn't understand fermentation. So again, it was just curiosity that led me to, um, to dig deeper. And I, I, I think that's important. And I think enjoyment, you know, you got to like it. And it also, you have to feel that you're making a difference, I think. Um, you know, I feel that, that with Vega, I was able to get more high-quality plant-based foods to more people, which I, you know, I think helps the environment, and I think it helps them and their life and help them live a better life. And, you know, um, there's, there's some sense of purpose there that I think is important, too. I think most people need to feel that, and I think a lot don't. Um, I know I need to feel it at least to some level that I'm I'm helping and making a difference and doing something good. Um, so those those are kind of the things that I go by and yeah, it, but it starts off with curiosity I think and an enjoyment of discovery and improvement. You know, by nature I'm not a competitive person, um, so doing triathlon was never about being outwardly competitive. It was just about trying to trying to learn more about myself and understand okay, what happens when this gets hard? Like at the 20 mile mark in the marathon, it's going to be hard. What do you do? Where does your mind go? Um, do you crumble? Do you push through it? Or do you find this new, this new feeling inside yourself that allows you to dig in deeper and that you actually become to, to really enjoy it? Um, and it's just like different, different ways of looking at things and you just really learn a lot about yourself. So it's more self-discovery. Um, and curiosity and trying to do something <laughs> that's kind of useful than, uh, than really anything else. Well, I love that. You, you know, you, you said three things that I think, uh, everyone can take away from it, or at least these are things that I said you, so you mentioned curiosity and I also want to couple that with, uh, I think you've got a real sort of like teachable and coachable spirit and a level of humility. I think that that's, you know, and that part of that is sort of this curiosity of like, some people think I know it all already. Right. And like, I, I, I can tell you're wired like this. And, and I know um, people that are successful are, it's this thing like, no, I want to learn. I want to grow. Like, I know I can be better. And so again, I, I love that. I love you talked about passion. You know, there's a joy there. Like if you love, if you're in the field that you're called to be in, that there's a joy there. I know for me too, like, my wife, you know, when we first met, asked, she's like, do you actually like cooking? I'm like, yes. Like, like when I get home from work, for some people, it's stressful for me making a meal. 
Uh, even if it takes an hour, like it's actually fun. Like it actually is a stress reliever for me. I love it. But again, doing things you're passionate about. And I love there the purpose piece as well. Doing something with purpose, something that, you know, helps people, something that makes the world a better place. And I think you've done such a good job in sort of, you know, marrying these great qualities together. And I can see why, you know, why you've had success in a lot of these, uh, really all these areas. So I think that's fantastic. Uh, one of the things too, I think that, um, I remember back from when I was doing a lot of triathlons was, you know, you've got to be, you've got to be eating a certain diet to have a certain level of energy as well. I think if people are working out a lot and today, as you, you know, people aren't getting enough sleep, uh, people are overwhelmed to a degree, but also, you know, I, I saw a, a general survey not too long ago that said 80, 80 plus percent of people say they struggle with fatigue low energy and just being overtired. Mm -hmm. I know you've already given us a lot of tips, but what are some of your favorite foods or adaptogens or things that you do or recommend that can help support people in their energy? I think for, for me, something that really helped was eating throughout the day, just kind of grazing as opposed to eating regular meals. And, you know, that, that's kind of a personal preference that I find works well. Um, you know, it's probably not for everyone, but I just find the energy level is, is way more steady if I, if I graze. Um, and, and I know that at some, like I think Google kind of made it popular, but having those, uh, you know, cafeterias, their Googleplex where employees can go up and eat whenever they want, you know, so then there's not like at noon, everyone goes in there traditionally, and then by two or three, their energy levels dropped and productivity's fallen off. So Google experimented with that at, and found that it just really evened things out when people could kind of graze and go throughout the day and eat. Um, and we, we do that at the Vega office now too in Vancouver, where it's just, you know, we have amazing chefs there, everything's plant-based and, you know, people just go in and kind of eat when they want. And uh, energy level seems really good and really steady. So I found that works well for me. Um, and I think, you know, trying to get a lot of nutrients in early too, like I was talking about that, that big smoothie, have that in the morning. Um, and then you got, got your nutrition bases covered because also too, you know, if you're training a lot, like if you're going for long bike rides, for example, you actually want to do some things that would normally not be as healthy. Like you actually want to eat some things that are a little less nutrient dense and more refined, oddly enough. But for example, you wouldn't want to have a really fiber rich, um, like high volume meal on a bike, right? Because it takes yeah. a lot of energy to digest. And it takes a lot of stomach volume. So you actually want to condense down what you put in your stomach um, and, and not have fiber because you don't need fiber then. You just need carbs, you know, some starch and some sugar. Um, so that's why gels are, are good. And, you know, I'd make my, my own homemade gels and even just a little maple syrup and things like that where you have a condensed amount of sugar um, that normally you wouldn't want but when you're out for a long bike ride um, it becomes very efficient or even things like white rice you know you can make your own energy bars with almond butter and white rice and you wouldn't want brown again because you know in that instance because there's fiber in it and you want that later in the day but you don't want that when you're working out you just want st simple sugars and starch um so yeah some some things in there that could seem sort of contradictory for those who haven't looked into the whole thing, but uh, I, I really think that helps. Well, well, I'll say this. So I think my philosophy is that of ancient Chinese medicine. That's what I adhere to, which is 4,000 years old. And it's that there's no one diet that's perfect for everybody. It's, it really depends on uh, you know, your lifestyle. It depends on how you personally are wired. And so I'm with you. I think some people do great with grazing. I'll just say this. When my wife was pregnant, like she, she went from eating her three square meals a day to she grazed, like she had to, it's what her body did well with. When I was doing triathlons, I was a grazer too. Like I would eat, you know, constantly throughout the day and I felt great. And now that I'm not doing those and I'm just doing more weights and body weight stuff, my body doesn't do as well. But that being said, I think people, especially some athletes will do great with that type of diet. And then, you know, other people may not, uh, you know, of course, intermittent fasting is probably one of the more popular things today. But again, like some people don't do as well with that. I know I personally, I might wait till like 9am to eat on some occasions or eight and I may be up an hour or two, but I don't, I really don't, follow intermittent fasting at this point because my body doesn't doesn't do well with it either but i think it goes back to this principle you alluded to like every 
everybody's different, but you got to listen to your body as well. I think it's so important there. And just because somebody, because what happens sometimes people are like, you know, they hear from a doctor or they hear from somebody like get lots of fiber and they'll go and eat a lot of fiber, then try and work out and their stomach gets upset. And it's anyways, it's a, it's a good point. One of the last questions I would have for you, Brendan, is love to hear about what is your, what does a day look like? Like a day in the life of Brendan, when do you wake up? What do you do for food, workout, business life? Like what is, what, 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 what does your day look like? They're, um, you know, they're pretty all over the place to be honest with you. And when I travel, like when the world, um, you know, is back, back to normal and traveling and, and stuff, it will be very different of course. But, um, yeah, I usually get in an earlier workout. Um, usually over at, at Gold's in Venice here. Um, but right now just doing my workouts at home in the morning and yep. then, um, yeah, I usually just, you know, get some work done. Um, just at home, you know, I don't have an office to go into. I just, uh, work from home. So do that. And then, uh, yeah, usually some other workout again later in the day, you know, not, I don't even really like calling it workout. It's just sort of just fun. I go for a bike ride or go for a run or whatever, just enjoy it. But, and then, <laughs> you know, any, any number of things can happen. I just, I'm open to, uh, to the way things go. I, I'm not, you know, I'm not as regimented as I was back when I was doing triathlon. Cause you have to be so regimented then as, as you know, so it's, you know, just everything's timed out and I want to get away from that too. I didn't, you know, I did that for, you know, over a decade, very, very regimented. So I like, I like things to be a little more fluid now, just yeah. a little better. Like I, you know, I'll have a general idea of what I want to get done for the day, but how I do that just sort of, I'm just sort of open to that now, you know, it's not, not super reg regimented. I love it for everything. There is a season. So it's so good. Yeah. Well, I want to say, Brendan, and it was great having you on the show. I want to mention a few things for everybody listening. Remember, Hey, if you want to check out these amazing new beverages, uh, that Brendan has created. Uh, and again, these are uh, alcoholic beverages. They're low in alcohol. So listen, if alcohol is not your thing, then hey, don't don't go there and don't send me any you know mean responses that you don't think we should talk about alcohol in the show. But anyways, all that being said, these are fantastic. Uh, just hard-pressed apples. And listen to some of these ingredients. You've got uh, the Think, which actually helps your brain. It's got guava peach, ginseng, matcha, and lion's mane and so many others. You can find that at pulp. That's P-U-L-P culture.com. Also, he's got his 101 cider.com. You can find that online. These can be shipped right to your home. And um, also, Brendan has, you can go to amazon.com. He's written a book. He's uh, part of the company Vega. They've got some great uh, nutritional products you can check out there as well. And um, Brendan want to say, hey, if I'm ever in town, I'll give you a shout. You live in the city is, you know, one of my favorite, uh, actually two of my favorite spots. Jelena has the best brunch, one of the best brunches in the country. And then I love, uh, I love Air One. I mean, I just, one of my favorite health food stores in the country. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. Good. I look forward to it. Awesome. Well, Brendan, hey, thanks so much for being on the show. Thanks to everybody for listening. I'll be back with another podcast next week. Uh, thanks again here to Brendan Brazier. This podcast is for information purposes only. Statements and views expressed in this podcast are not medical advice and have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. In some cases, individuals on this podcast may have a direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to herein. 